Hey guys, this is Sarah with Raven's Crochet. Welcome back to my channel. I am here to finally bring this tutorial to you guys. Work has been kicking my butt, but I'm so excited. I just got home from work, cleaned up, and I'm going to show you how to make this hat. Now this hat I previous, previously showed you um, a few of my videos ago. I uploaded um, a tutorial. This is half double crochet. You chain 56. You do half double crochets. You're still doing three single crochets in those last three stitches only on one side of your work so that there's less bulk in your saving yarn for the top of your hat. But I'm going to show you an improved version of this. This is a much better pattern and you will be saving even more yarn. This is very versatile by the way. You can have a low brim and have it slouchy or you can have a high brim and you can double up um, the fabric to cover your ears when it's super cold. This to me is like a galaxy colors. This is, um, what yarn is this? Oh, I have it right here. The yarn I used for this hat is from Hobby Lobby. This is, I love this yarn. It is 100% acrylic. It's a number four. The colorway is called Moody Mosaic. I'm so glad you guys can see that in my video. I can see through the camera, 252 yards, 230 meters. It's a five ounce skein at 142 grams. It's easily washable and dryable. And of course it gets a little bit softer once you pull it out of the dryer. So this works up so nice. You just go back and forth and then you sew one end down, then you close the top of the hat and you're done. So this is an improved tutorial and I completely forgot the yarn I was going to start this project with. Let me grab some yarn real quick. Um, let me see. Well, you know what? We're just going to use this yarn here. Screw it. Why not? This will look pretty worked up. This is a basic acrylic. The best kind of yarn you want to use for this, uh, you're also going to need a darning needle, a pair of scissors, and you're going to need one stitch marker. One stitch marker. Um, let's see. Let's get out a stitch marker. Okay. So the yarn you want to use for this is something that you can easily wash and dry in the machines. Doesn't matter if it has an agitator in the washing machine or not. Doesn't matter what kind of soap you, you like to use, whatever your favorite soap is. Um, this is going to be a wearable. It'll get makeup on it. It'll get dirt on it. You know, just regular wear and tear. And I'm getting a tangle already in my beginning. Okay. And for this tutorial, I'm using a 5 millimeter crochet hook. And, oh my gosh, I lost my hook. Ah, I lost my hook. Okay, well, <laughs> all right, well, actually, I see my hook over there, but I'm not going to go get it. This plastic hook I have here is a five millimeter. I got this from Dollar Tree and a two pack for a dollar. Sorry about the wiggling. That's a five millimeter crochet hook. Whatever favorite hook you have, that is a five millimeter. And again, this is a four worsted weight yarn. We are going to chain 51. 51. Just to show you in this tutorial, I'm going to do a small swatch and show you how this pattern is worked up. It is a two row repeat. Very, very easy once you get this pattern down. A tape measure will also be handy. I will be measuring out the finished piece for you before we sew up the, um, before we sew up the seam. So, chain 51. In my scrap piece here, I'm just going to chain 11, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay, so this is a two row repeat, but it's very simple to follow. You're going to work three single crochets on one end of your work. So the first row, this is this is our base chain. Our first row, we are going to double crochet in the second chain from hook. Normally, you would double crochet in the third chain from hook, but I like smaller gaps. And this side of our work right here is going to be where our brim is. Your beginning tail, this is going to be the side where our single crochets are. So chain 51 and then do a, uh, do a double crochet in the second chain from hook. The loop on your hook does not count, so we'll count back one and two. Now I like to work in the back bumps. That's the front of your chain. Here's the back of your chain. You see those little bumps? Sorry that my nails are so dirty. I wash my hands constantly at work. So there is the first bump and there's the second bump. So I'm going to yarn over and do my first double crochet and this back bump right here. 
And I like working in the back bumps for this particular pattern because it gives you a smoother seam on the back. Oops, I, mean, I messed that up. Let me try that again. So I'm going to yarn over and do a double crochet in the second back bump, the second chain from hook. Hi, baby girl. I just fed her and gave her some treats. I haven't really loved on her too much yet. I just want to get this tutorial out for you guys because I said I would get it out. So, And I'm going to keep your back bumps kind of lined up one way so that way you can keep track of every, every one as you go down your chain here. Just do a double crochet in each chain until you get to the last three chains. Um, stop there, pause the video, and then I will meet you at those last three chains. But I'm not going to pause the video so you can keep playing, working on whatever you're working on, take some notes for this pattern if you need to. I hope you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm trying to stay in the center of the frame. Okay, so this is my last double crochet. You did your chain 51. You're going to have 47 double crochets in this first row. And then you'll have three single crochets. And the last three chains. Get in that back bump. Back bump. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Come here, get in there. This is where a smaller hook or a darning needle will come in handy. You can wedge that in there to open up that stitch. Make sure I'm only going under one strand of yarn here. Sorry guys, please be patient. I'm trying here. Oh gosh, oh gosh, oh gosh, oh gosh. Come on, come on. You know what? We're just gonna, all right, fiddle with it. All right. <clears throat> This is just a practice swatch I'm doing for you guys so you can get the idea on the pattern. Once you get it down, it's super, super easy. I promise you. Even a beginner can do this. I have faith in you. I know you can do this pattern. Okay, second single crochet. Here's third, my third single crochet. Okay. So this is row two. I'm going to show you how to do row two and then row three and then you are going to repeat row two and row three until you have worked up 32 rows. 32 rows is the, it's pretty much the perfect medium for the average adult size beanie. However, you can make it 28 rows, 30 rows, 36 rows. Just It just depends on the thickness of the person's head you are making this beanie for. But 32 rows is perfect for the average size adult head. So. Next row, I'm going to chain one. This is row two again. Chain one and turn your work. Do three single crochets on top of these single crochets. We will always do three, three single crochets in this section on, on this side of our work. So right in this very first stitch where we chained a loop up, do a single crochet and we're working underneath both loops here. This will give us a cleaner edge for the closing at the top of the hat. Now, on this section, you can chain underneath, you can stitch under the back loop only, but I just find it more simpler just to single crochet and underneath both loops. And then when we do our double crochets, we will be working into the back loop only. This is what's going to give us this ridging effect right here. This is the hat I'm going to show you guys how to close up. This will give us this nice ridging working in the back bumps only. So we did our three single crochets under both loops. We're going to do um, double crochets um, under the back loop. So there's the front loop right there, and then here's the back loop. So yarn over and work underneath that back loop only, and then do your double crochets all the way down the row. Please don't use a, pra a, a plastic hook, one that's flimsy like this. It doesn't really work the best, but I dropped my hook on the floor over there. I don't feel like getting it, so we're just going to keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. Get some more yarn slack. Keep moving until you get to the very last stitch on the row. Keep going, keep going. This very last chain, yarn over, we're going to work underneath both loops, both front and back. So you've got two loops on your hook right there. Right there. Let me split them apart. 
So you can see that better. Okay, we got the front and the back loop on our hook. And do our double crochet. Now again, this side is the brim of your hat. This side is going to be the top of the hat where we close. So doing your stitch, your last stitch, in both front and back loops, that will keep the brim of your hat more even. And there will not be as many gaps. The yarn won't be pulling as wide. And it'll just look a lot neater. Then chain one. This is row three. Chain one. Turn your work. You just did a double crochet here, so you're going to yarn over. This very first stitch right here that we did this chain one from, work underneath both loops. Both loops. Do a double crochet right here. This is the side of where your brim is going to be. And then continue on working underneath just the back loops only. There's the back loop. There's the front, front and both. There's both loops going into the back loop only. So work your double crochet stitches across the row under the back loops only until you get to the last three stitches in this row. And sorry for the band-aids and my messy fingers. I cut two of my fingers at work this evening. It, it just happens. Every week I'm hurting one of my fingers. Not intentionally. I just, I move so fast. My family and friends are always telling me to slow down because I move like an F5 half the time. Just want to get stuff done and get on home. But I'm always hurting myself. So, okay, I got three stitches. I'm really sorry. I'm, not, I'm going out of frame here. Three stitches left. Do our single crochets. One. Two. And three. Oops, I lost the stitch. And three. Okay, so you see how this side is going to be more narrow than the side where your brim is? We want that. This will reduce bulk, it will save some of your yarn, and it will give the hat a better shape, and it'll just have like a, it'll like naturally want to close up at the top. So we did our chain of 51, double crochet in the second chain from hook, do a double crochet in the back bumps until you get to the last three chains, three single crochet, chain one, three single crochet, and then in the back loops only work your double crochets. The very last stitch work underneath both loops to keep the brim edge even. Chain one, do a double crochet in both front and back loops. Continue your double crochets in the back loops only. That's what's going to give us this little edge for decoration, this little bump here. Last three stitches, do single crochets, chain one, repeat row two, work your way down, chain one, repeat row three. So repeat row two and repeat row three until you have worked 32 rows. Rewind the video if you need a recap on that. Your stitch marker, I forgot to mention, I don't, I didn't use a stitch marker because I'm, I'm so used to this pattern. You can mark, use this stitch marker to mark where your single crochet row start so that way when you come back down from doing your double crochets you will not accidentally continue doing double crochets you can just take your stitch marker back out and then work your three single crochets chain one three single crochet then you can put your stitch marker back in continue your double crochets chain one come back you'll see your stitch marker to remind you that those are single crochets so that's why this is really handy and you only need one stitch marker so now when you're finished doing all of your rows, you're going to have a piece that looks like this. It's just going to be like a rectangle kind of. It's more of a, of a rectangle than a square. And here's the top of the hat. This is all the single crochets, three single crochet. You see how the hat, it has that natural curve. Hope you guys can see this okay. Let me see if I can zoom out some. Sorry guys, bear with me here. I don't have the best setup for tutorials but I will get a better setup at some point. Raven's doing her laps running back and forth across the apartment. Okay so this is our brim edge. I double crocheted in both front and back loops on every single row. I've got the ridging effect from working in back and the from working my double crochets in the back loop only. And then here is the single crochets on this side and you see how it's already forming that natural curve. It wants to curve in in a round circle shape and you want that it reduces bulk it saves some of your yarn many benefits right so when you're done with this 
and this is again 51 chains across second um, chain from your hook you'll start your stitches and you're gonna have 50 stitches across and every single row you're gonna have 50 stitches including your three single crochets so from top to bottom this is going to measure about 30, 14 inches just under 14 inches if you're going by centimeters it's just under 35 centimeters and after 32 rows three centimeters in every two rows or one inch in every two rows so we're going to have just under 18 inches on the width actually hang on 18 yeah okay so maybe 18 and a half inches and then if you're working centimeters then it's going to be just under 46 centimeters and that's an average size for an adult beanie okay so your beginning tail your beginning tail should be on the side where you did your single crochets that's the beginning tail and I did an even number of rows so your your working yarn still attached should be on the side where your brim is so we are going to lay this out to where your working yarn is on your right working yarn is on your right your single crochets are on your left and there's your working your beginning tail we're going to fold this up and we're going to line it up with the other side of the hat so this is the working yarn on the side of the brim there's your beginning tail on the side where your single crochets are that's the top of the hat we're going to fold these two ends together to where they meet and we are going to slip stitch now you can knot this off and cut it and leave a 20 inch tail for whip stitching if you prefer to do it that way but I'm just going to do a slip stitch and I want to get a bigger let me grab a bigger hook real quick uh, excuse me guys hang on a second bear with me please six inch I need a six millimeter okay got it if you work tightly with your yarn, if you do tight stitches, go up a full hook size from a five millimeter to a six millimeter. Or if you are okay working with the same five millimeter hook, then and and you can work your yarn loosely, then you can do that. But sometimes I have a tendency to pull the yarn a little tight, so I'm going up to a six millimeter. This is one of my tulip hooks I got from Ice Yarns. Love this hook. So I'm going to be doing my slip stitches with a six millimeter. And to start, I'm just going to go underneath both loops, both loops on the, on the, on the bottom, and then both loops on the top. And I'm going to do a slip stitch here. Tighten my loop a little bit and just do a, a quick little slip stitch. Oops, I lost my loops doing a slip stitch and I'm going to do it one more time just to make sure it's secure I'm going to do that one more time in the same spots same spots just do another slip stitch and that'll give it some more security now we're going to work on this front piece right here there's the front piece here's the back piece I'm sorry this yarn is so dark but this is an order that was placed this is the color that he chose for his hat so this is what I'm working with so I hope you can bear with me here this front edge we're going to work in the back loop only back loop only and then in this back piece we're going to work underneath both loops both loops get that on there okay so you're going to be going underneath the front the um, excuse me the back loop only and then underneath both loops and then we'll just do a slip stitch back loop and then both loops on this other side and you will do this all the way down until you get to the very top of your hat and while I'm doing this I'm gonna chit chat a little bit I have something really funny to tell you um, I work in a small store and a lot of times in the evening, especially after 7 o'clock, I get left there by myself. Yes, in a big store, by myself. So, 
There are certain things I cannot do when I'm by myself. I cannot step away from the registers. I can't leave the store unattended. Um, I have to be in view of the store at all times just to make sure no one is going in there and stealing merchandise and stuff like that. Um, well, anyways, we have propane tanks at my store, and they are outside. And they are off to the side of the store, outside, and I cannot... I can go out there when there's no customers in the store. If I'm, if there's no cars in the parking lot, you know, I don't need to be helping anyone. And we do our best to make everyone happy, but it is retail. We're not ever, we're not ever going to make every single person happy. It's, it's just not feasibly possible. <clears throat> but when we can't make the person happy, you know, I try to try to apologize sincerely. I try to offer suggestions, you know, maybe a telephone number that they might want to call. You know, I try to be nice and sincere with every person that comes in the store. But this gentleman, he was just, he was a douche. I mean, I'm sorry for my language, but he was just mean. He was a douchebag. Um, he wanted some propane exchanges, and I apologized and said, I'm by myself. I cannot go out there and exchange them for you because I cannot leave my registers. My night clerk will be here in about an hour. Otherwise, you're welcome to go right across the street to another business that I suggested. Or we have um, two other of our locations just a mile down the road, um, both directions, whether he turned left or right. Um, we've got lots of other locations. So again, here I'm doing the back loop only on this front piece and underneath both loops on the second piece. We're sewing up the seam. Uh, let's see, front and both loops. There we go. Okay. So anyways, um, I apologize and he's like, okay. And he was getting a little agitated and he crossed his arms. He's like, all right, well, let's talk about this for a minute. I'll go ahead and pay you. And then why don't I go out there and exchange them myself? I can put the tanks in the cage and get what I need. And I, and I apologized and said we cannot do that either. We cannot hand off the keys to any of our locks to any customer, no matter how nice they are, no matter how much of a regular that they are, no matter how often they come in. This, it's just against our policy. There are certain things we cannot do when we are alone because it is against policy. It's not safe for the, for the clerk. It's not safe for the store. It's not safe for other customers, and it could give someone else the potential to steal a lot of merchandise. I could lose hundreds of dollars of other stuff if I went out there for even two minutes to exchange a couple of tanks that cost 40 bucks. It's just not, I, I would have loved to have helped him, but again, I was alone, and I was not about to risk my job and break policy for someone. So after I told him that I also could not give him the keys to do that, you know... He's like, oh, I'm just going to call the corporate office. You, know, you can shove it up your ass. But I also apologize for the cuss word. He literally said that to me. You can shove it up your ass. So I'm like, okay, well, would you like the corporate office number so you can shove that up, up, up your ass too? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Like, he was mad. He was just all butthurt about that. And But I apologized sincerely three times and told him to have a nice night. And he was just so butthurt and huffy puffy walking out the door but I'm not one to put up with that crap we deal with so many people I deal with 300 plus people every single day many of their faces I've never seen before most of them I see just about every day and no matter how hard we try to make everyone happy it's just not physically possible so I laughed about it joked about it after he left I was back inside the store by myself. Well, I was in the store the whole time. I never went outside to help him because I couldn't. But I, of course, I made a note and left it for my manager because he did mention he's going to call corporate. And I offered him the number. He's like, I'll figure it out myself. I'm like, okay, well, you have a nice night then. And um, he mouthed something else off while walking out the door. But um, I left my manager a note just in case this guy decides to call corporate office and complain just so my manager knows exactly what happened so I thought that was really funny and then we have a lottery machine in there and for some reason I have no idea what happened but it started shutting down on its own I don't know if a customer accidentally hit something or bumped into it or what but I tried three times to get it to reboot and I could not only our managers have the keys to access inside the machine 
and there is a, a there is a switch inside that where the managers can reboot it. So manager's not going to be there till 6 a.m. So he'll have to deal with that too when he gets in there. Oops, missed missed that stitch. Okay, I'm almost at the top of the hat. I'm getting there. I really appreciate you guys, by the way, bearing with me. Um, any new subscribers, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. You are not just a subscriber to me. You are my yarny friend, so welcome. And my next video, you'll be able to see my face again. Because I have some cool stuff to show you. And tomorrow, I have a day off. Finally, I will be going yarn shopping. Yay! I'm going to hit up Joann's and Hobby Lobby. And I haven't been there in quite a while, so I'm really excited about that. So sorry if I'm getting out of frame here. I need to put a marker on my table so I know where the center is. Okay, I'm just about to the top of the hat, and I'll show you guys how to seam this top together. Slip stitching, slip stitching, get some more yarn slack. One more, one more. All right. When you get to your single crochets, you don't have to continue working in the back loops only. This last one, I just went underneath both front and back loops. Both front and back loops and both front and back loops. The single crochets, it doesn't matter. You can work underneath back, uh, the back loop only the whole way throughout this pattern if you want to. But it's just, it just looks, looks a lot cleaner working underneath both loops. And then of course you have your reaching effect from your back loop only double crochets. So there's the last stitch. Okay. This is why I like to have the beginning tail at the top of the hat so that way I can tie this off and make this more secure. So now get about 12 inches and cut your yarn and I like to I always like to go through one more time pull it through and tighten it and then I just do a double knot right here just a simple double knot wrap it around once wrap it around twice that's good do one more knot done I can cut this tail off and that will go into my scraps for stuffing or whatever so now we have this long tail left. We've got the seam, the seam all nice and worked. Here's our seam line right here. This top ridge right here. I'm just going to stretch on that just a little bit so it's not pulling too tight. Okay, see the last hat I made? It was the red and black one. I used the same 5, five millimeter hook to do the slip stitching seam and it kind of tightened it a little bit. Because like I said, I have the tendency to pull my stitches a little bit too tight. And so you want to just slightly stretch this just a little bit. Not over stretching it, but stretch it out just a little bit. And now look at that. Can you even tell where the seam is? Because I can't. Look at that. So much better. I can't even tell where the seam is really. Okay, so now there's the top of the hat. And you see how this is already folded in. It's got less bulk. It has a tendency of want to um, curve in. So this is the best part right here. We're going to take our darning needle, a fairly, kind of a fairly big one, and we're just going to thread this through, just like this, thread it through. We're just going to do, what's that basic stitch, the basic sewing, it's like a basting stitch for holding fabrics together for sewing. We're just going to um, work underneath two loops only, yeah, try to work underneath two loops only because you don't want you don't want to go too far down because then you're going to have more bulk so work try to work underneath um, two loops only and just it doesn't matter if it's precise just do a weave stitch a, ba a basting stitch and just kind of go in and out in and out in and out just like that all the way around the hat just kind of go in and out just doing a regular basting stitch here and pull that through here's the here's where we did that knot I'm gonna go a little bit past that just to make this more even and more tightly closed just go a little bit past it and then there, right there, we can call it good. I just went a couple of spots past it and gently tighten. 
gently tighten. Don't pull too tight because then you're, you're going to break your yarn. Just be gentle with this. You got it nice and closed up here. So now, to secure this, I just go back and forth a few times. I just kind of go underneath two stitches. Try not to get more than two stitches because you're just going to create more, more bulk up here. Don't go back in the same spot. Go in through a different spot and just gather some stitches. Sorry if I'm off frame. So sorry. Just go back and forth a few times. Just like this. Try not to go too low. You don't want to add more bulk. Back and forth a few times. It doesn't matter where you go. As long as you've got this nice and secure. I really don't want to lose any of these stitches. And then I just kind of do a knot a couple of times. Gather up another stitch. Do another knot. Do another knot. Three or four knots I like to do. You don't have to, you can do two or three. I like to do three or four. Really depends on your preference. Hi baby, I'm just about done. Cut that tail off. Now we are going to turn this hat right side out. So I just take my arm in, grab the top of the hat right there, pull the brim down. And look, our hat is done. Look at that. Look at that. It's done. It's done. It's done. So that's the brim. Here, I'll measure this one more time. This is about how tall your hat's going to be. And this from the very top of the seam to the bottom of the hat, I've got 31 and a half inches. Nope, excuse me, 13 and a half inches. 31 is way too long. 13, excuse me, 14 and a half inches. 14 and a half inches long from the seam up top to the bottom of the brim. And this is going to be a slouchy beanie, like I said. You can give it some slouch in the back, like that. Or you can double up the brim and keep your ears super warm. And that is the double crochet beanie. It works up faster because double crochets are a little bit bigger than half double crochets. Um, you're, do, you're chaining, you're chaining um, five chains fewer, so that's saving you some yarn. The last tutorial I did, you chained 56. This one, you're chaining 51. So that's saving you some yarn. The hat doesn't need to be quite that long. So this is a much better version. It works up so much quicker. And it's just as warm and, and cozy. And it's so easy to make. And I love how these turn out. So if you make one of these, please email me a picture. I would love to see pictures. My email address is ravenscrochet21 at gmail.com. That is